going to do away with that piece of equipment. Can you hear me in the back? Thank you very much. I do appreciate the applause that you gave me. But let me say that I don't receive that for me. I receive that applause for all of those Marines who never got to come home. So we are applauding them this day. <coughs> Tony told me that I could speak for 60 minutes, but I'm really going to cut it to an hour. <laughs> I brought uh, one of my fellow Marines with me. I usually try to take a Marine with me to keep 85-year-old women from bothering me. <laughs> I'm going to fire him. He's doing some good job. I haven't been bothered all morning. So you're fired. <laughs> Get it, girls. <laughs> Thank you, Tony, for inviting me. It is a pleasure to be here, and what amount of work you have done since I was last here, you certainly are to be commended. Usually on these occasions, we talk about country, freedom, sacrifice, service, all of which are very excellent topics. In fact, if we look at it closely, they are miracles. In fact, I have a question. I'd like to see a show of hands. How many of you in this group believe in miracles? Thank you very much. We have a majority. We won. <laughs> if we look around us, there are miracles everywhere. There's a lot of them in this room. There are a lot of us would not be here without a miracle in our life. There are those who really should not be here and would not be had it not been for a miracle. We've all heard the words that we are our brother's keeper. In fact, we are. That's why many of our buddies gave their lives for another. There's a story of two twin boys who were out fishing. One liked the water, the other just put up with it. One of the boys fell in out of the boat. And because of his clothing and what he had on, he kept going down and bouncing up. The brother who did not like to swim and did not like the water jumped in and saved him. And when he was asked, why did you do that? He said, our dad told us that we were our brother's keepers. And even though we fight and fuss, I wanted to keep him around a little bit longer. <laughs> I'm going to ask a favor. Stop your mind at this moment. And think of a miracle in your own life or in the life of a loved one. In the silence of this moment, as Tony says, what memories we have. But it makes us realize that we are our brother's keeper. Maybe it was a near accident, or maybe it was an operation, 
Maybe it was a heart attack. Or maybe it was just completely boot camp training in the Marine Corps. <laughs> Some of us consider that a miracle too, <laughs> that the sergeant didn't kill us. <laughs> or jumping out a perfectly good airplane, not knowing where you're going to land or on what. Facing some guy determined to kill you. Just being born an American. You know, if my daddy had been Italian, I might have been born in Italy. Fortunately, he was a West Virginia hillbilly. <laughs> but if you can't think of one, think of all the sacrifices that have taken place so that you and I could live in peace in the very best place on this earth. A miracle. <laughs> on July 4, 17 and 76, a few days before I was born, <laughs> another day, another miracle happened. Let me read some of the words of that miracle. We, the representatives of the United States of America, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world, declare that these United States are and of the right ought to be free and independent that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British colony and crown, and that all political connections between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. You and I today are living that miracle. If you would, pardon the personal example, but I should not be here. When I was born the 11th out of 11, somebody said there were 10 kids and then an accident. <laughs> Maybe I was the accident. <laughs> I weighed three pounds. Three pound babies in 1923 seldom ever survived. They had no oxygen. We had no formulas. We had a one heating place in the house, which was a fireplace. We had no incubators for babies. We had incubators for chickens, <laughs> and we saved a lot of chickens, <laughs> but we lost a lot of babies. We had no doctor. No doctor came and smacked me on the butt to get me breathing. I don't know who did that. Somebody must have. <coughs> My daddy was a coon dog, raiser, hunter, loved to coon hunt. He said that the first night, I looked so much like one of those coon dogs <laughs> that he put me out on the porch to see if I was going to bark or cry. <laughs> now be thankful, I cried. <laughs> In the Wounded Warriors National Program that is so very popular today and doing such great work, they list some miracles that we seldom ever think about. And we go through life this way. Every day we go through life not necessarily thinking of these things. The miracle of laughing. You just did. What if you couldn't? The miracle of remembering. They're not all bad. 
There's some beautiful memories. All of us have them. The memory of forgetting. Thank the Lord some of us have been able to remove some of those things from our brain that bothered us tremendously when we first came home. The miracle of smiling and talking and serving others. The miracle of just getting home from a war. Many of you right now are thinking of miracles in your own life. Or maybe the life of a loved one. Or perhaps just a friend. When each of us were born in this great United States of America, three miracles happened when we drew our first breath. First was the miracle of life that was given to us by God. The second was the miracle of being born in a free country where we did not and were not raised in fear. Where somebody else had already paid the price so we could be free. And the miracle of being able to love. Can you imagine a world without love? <clears throat> no. No. And many of us, and I certainly am one of those, I have asked myself many, many times in my life, why me? Why me? Why did I survive when the Marine right beside me didn't? Why was I selected to represent all those Marines who didn't get to come home? Why me? I don't have that answer. All of us have had Moments in our life when there is no explanation of what happened. We cannot explain it. Maybe we purposely caused it, but maybe it was fate that caused it. There was a 14-year-old boy from the little town of Hammond, North Carolina. Father died when he was nine. His widowed mother could not read nor write. At 14, he became a very rebellious teenager. He wouldn't listen to mom. Finally, she went to court and had him placed in a military academy. 